Okay, we are here at Bel Air Bait and Tackle in Bel Air, Florida. We are going to be talking to Jake King, who is presently the owner. And we're going to learn a little bit about the importance of a bait store, a tackle shop, and the people that work there. For all you new guys that are new to the sport and girls that are new to the sport, don't be afraid to befriend them, to trust them, because your trust means you're going to support them and they're going to help you put fish in the basket. And that's what it's all about. So we're going to get started right now and we're going to do a little Q&A session with Jake and ask him for the sake of you viewers, you new, you new guys and girls at this sport, what you would want to know and maybe afraid to ask. So here we go. All right, Jake, I'm Charles. Jake, nice, nice to meet you, man. Well, he is the owner and, and the proprietor and the big man over here. So as you can see, he's doing it from the bottom up, making his own rigs. Yes, sir. So this is interesting, and this is the real life behind the scenes. Well, let me ask you an elementary question. Uh, this time of year, it's March now in Florida. What's biting this time of year? Um, yeah, so inshore, you're going to catch everything from your snook and your redfish. Um, trout bite's been pretty pretty fired up as usual right now. It's pretty consistent with the cooler weather. Okay. Um, off of the beaches, and at least in our area, you're going to get your pompano and your black drum. Um, so the shark guys are starting to rig up, get ready for shark fishing for oh, the summertime. Exciting. Oh, yeah. Offshore-wise, um, most of my charter guys are still catching grouper you know you can't keep them but mm -hmm. other than the reds they're killing the hogfish right now oh, and everybody is getting fired up on kingfish and we have another employee here harrison who's who's making our uh, our kingfish rigs as we talk and um i'm making more of our deep drop stuff harrison hey, you want to show him a, a stinger rig bud yeah let's see what you got here we got your basic treble hook Snell knotted, it's your basic Fora Mustad J hook, also Snell knotted, to your swivel with a figure eight knot on it. And you're looking at about 18 inches long. And between the hooks, you wanna be four to six inches long, depending on how big of a bait you're throwing. A little killer right there. Yep. Absolutely, absolutely. Well, Jake, here's question number two. Yes, sir. In a week's time, what do you think, how many uh, fishermen do you think you actually talk to and help, whether beginners, whether they're, um, you know, uh, real experienced? Yeah, so we have a wide range. Being close to a big tourism area like Clearwater Beach, we do get a lot of tourists who are first time fishing in the Gulf or, mm -hmm. you know, fishermen from up, or up north and they're coming down and they're like, hey, do these musky rigs work? And we have to kind of go through them and kind of show them like our little trades of the secret. Um, you know, a big thing we, we talk to people about here is our water is very clear. So mm -hmm. we try to get them away from the swivels. We go to a lighter leader and mm -hmm. we just kind of do that whole ordeal. Um, but yeah, I probably talk to probably over 500 people a week through the shop. Weekends, of course, are, are jam packed. We are at a boat ramp. So we're getting a lot of people who are going out on their boats and. You get all the people who you know come out and want to try king fishing for the first time. So we do, like you saw earlier, make all these ready rigs so they can grab and go. Absolutely. And they can just Absolutely. put them on a sardine or, you know, a ladyfish or a mullet or whatever they got. They can just mm -hmm. go fish and catch some fish, which is our number one goal here is, of course, customer service. But our number two goal is to get you guys on fish. Absolutely. So, so that leads to the next question. What would you tell, say I'm a newbie. Yeah. What would you tell me if I've never been... I want to go fishing, a guy or girl, where yeah. do I start? I don't know anything. So the biggest thing I always tell or ask, but my first question is if you have your own gear. Um, if you have rods and reels, bring them up to the shop. We don't charge anything. We'll hook them up with our own gear kind of to get you acclimated to fishing our waters. That's the biggest thing I tell people. And I know Harrison, that's the biggest thing he's going to say too. Is. So we're going to rig you up to be able to go catch that kind of species that you're going after. And then we're gonna go into what kind of bait that we use. Um, currently we offer right now at the shop fiddler crabs, grunts, pinfish, and mm -hmm. shrimp all daily. Um, you know, 
fiddler crabs are more of a crustacean, so your your drum are gonna hit them more, and your sheep's head okay. are definitely gonna hit them more. The shrimp can get fired off on anything. The trout love them. Oh yeah. I've caught them, caught a plenty of redfish oh. with them, and then the grunts. You know, those are great for grouper and offshore and deep drop stuff, but. You know, the snook guys, we, we sell out of them every day because the snook just love the grind. Excellent. And Excellent. Uh, that's pretty much that. Here's another great question that uh, a lot of people are asking. What's your, and it's a dangerous one, what's your biggest fish you've ever caught? Tell them first. My biggest fish I've Put caught. Your hand on the line <laughs> my biggest fish inshore I've caught was. It was probably close to 42, 43 pound black drum. Oh, that's a big one. Off, um, off a bridge piling on a dead blue crab. Excellent. And it Excellent. took me for the run of my life. Oh yeah, they're powerful fish. Yep. Yeah. yeah. What about you, Jake? It'd have to be this snook I caught last year. It's, it's a good sized snook. Definitely over 40, I would say. <laughs> what we know and uh, just caught him on some real low pound test. I think I was using 10 pound braid and 15 pound leader. Wow. So it's pretty pretty good for my standards. An anyway. unexpected very catch too. Unexpected. Very unexpected. Oh, you guys get together? No. But uh, just the way it went down, I was fishing more of like a brack area that I knew they were there, but I would say that we didn't think they were that big. No, so no, not was, at all. It was very cool. So. What, in your whole store, what is probably the number one lure, artificial bait that you guys sell? Definitely most popular right now is a mirrodine. Seasonal yeah. right now, mirrodine. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, let's get a mirrodine. Yeah. So for your pompano off the beach, we have the Doc's Goofy Jigs. And all you have to do, tie a knot right there, mm -hmm. and you just lightly jig them off the beach, off the bottom, and the pompano will go crazy over them. And it's the simplest thing. It, the weight's already on it. It's basically a jig head, just a little differently poured. And then for your flats, we have the mirrodine. And the mirrodine sinks about anywhere between six inches and 12 inches underwater. And you just twitch, twitch, reel, twitch, twitch, reel. Trout, snook, ladyfish, redfish. flounder, redfish, everything eats these. Yeah, that's a suspended twitch bait. Yeah, guys, see that, that iridescent? I caught so many fish. I caught one of my biggest uh, snook on something like that. Yep. He snagged it. Other than a lure, now, what is your number one selling item that's your hottest thing in the store right now? Well, I would say our hottest item, no matter what, is grunts. Grunts? Yeah, live grunts. Because um, you can use them for both situations. You can go offshore and get really big gags with them, but you can walk the beach in a couple of months here and, and crush them too. Um, we do sell shrimp every day and we sell out of shrimp. That's kind of a given with the bait shop. To mm -hmm. have shrimp in this area, everyone's gonna have shrimp. But I really, and I know Harrison, we, we take pride in always having grunts because a lot of other bait shops usually run out of grunts and I make sure that we always have enough. So. Excellent. So if a newbie comes in and gets that, it might be a little overwhelming, where would you tell them is the best place to get started? To yeah, some yeah. Fish? shrimp is always the best place. Um, they're easy to handle. The best thing about shrimp, if you have a family and kids too, the kids love picking their hands in the bucket and picking them up. They're not going to pinch them that bad, you know, nothing like that. The grunts are kind of like a pinfish if you're unfamiliar. They've got like the dorsal fin that can get you. And uh, we hook the grunts right above the nose, personally. Um, some people hook them through the tail. I've seen people cut off the tail and hook them through mm -hmm. the half yeah. of that. Um, there's all different situations. Um, predominantly, when I tell people how to fish with shrimp, I tail hook them myself. And I would say everybody at the shop here that works here also tails hook them. Now, so. tell, tell, tell the audience why tail hooking. How does, it, how does a shrimp move in the water? Yeah, so basically a shrimp is going like this. It's going backwards. So the fish are, are very smart. You know, they eat this predominantly throughout the year, so they know they attack that shrimp from the back, so it's just an easy So when you center. pull on it from the back with the yeah. tail, it's lifelike motion? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Exactly. Oh, excellent. Yeah. Excellent. So, excellent. That's the whole, the whole, you know, thing behind the tail hooking. Don't get me wrong, if you hook it through the horn and the head, right. you're going to catch fish, too. I just, for me personally, I 
started tail hooking them a couple years ago and it worked out. So that's kind of where I'm at. Right it's now. probably so, the most lifelike way to hook them. Yeah, and I think they do they do hold up a little bit better and they, they're more free swimming. Just like if you look at any one of our hook setups um, on our inshore, we always run like a loop knot too. You're Even right. if we're running a jig or whatnot, because you want that to be as lifelike as you can. So. Right, right, right. So now, as far as location, where would you, if, if they've got all this information, and now they're chomping at the bit to catch, yeah. where would you tell them to go fishing in this area here? Yeah, so um, if you guys want to get on like the Pompano, which some people really like, they're getting fish in the black drum, uh, about 10 minutes from the shop, Indian Rocks Beach, um, it's really good fishing for that. Okay. You can sit out there and lay out if you've got family, but you can also fish. Unlike Clearwater Beach, where you cannot fish, unless it's on the pier. Okay. Um, Sand Key is really good at this time of year, too, because the fish are kind of bedding up there because they don't know if they want to start spawning or not. So they're, they're like conjugating there. So okay. every night, usually when we get off the shop, when we get done with the shop, excuse me, we go out there and we'll catch some snook and some redfish. And if you got, we got fiddler crabs if you're into catching the sheep's head and whatnot, too. So. Excellent. Now, if you were going to promote a new product, what's your number one new product that you're promoting in the store? Yeah, I mean, it's definitely has nothing to do with fishing, but uh, I'm really, really close with these guys, and they're actually the sub safes over here. Uh, what's so cool about these products are uh, is that uh, we've all been there, we've all thrown a sandwich in a cooler. You're fishing for three or four hours and people are getting drinks and whatnot out of that cooler and your sandwich is either waterlogged or it's smushed. So, but these, these guys are so cool. Um, let me get you a brand new box and show you. So what's so cool about these, okay. They come with two pieces. They come in three colors, um, pink, gray, and blue. This is for a 12 inch um, right here. It's all waterproof, so if you're not throwing a sub in it, you can throw your keys or your cell phone or whatnot. So you know, most ladies, like every girlfriend I've ever dated, never wants to eat a full sub, <laughs> so they always go with the six inch. And, um, and these are, wa are watertight? Completely waterproof, yeah. So with the six inch, you just, um, yeah, this is the 12. Uh, and then where's my six inch bottle? So these are sub safes. They come in a 12 or 6 inch model. Um, I don't know. You know, they're, they're great for just throwing a sandwich in there, whether you go oh, cool. to Publix or whatnot. Sub safe. Yeah, so for the women and for the people who aren't eating a full sub, they got the 6 inch and I've seen a lot of people lately, they've been doing like a mixed drink or whatnot, and you're just putting straw on it and using it. Oh, wow. Um, they've got a seal to keep your keys safe and whatnot. Um, so you get all three pieces in the, um, the canister or in the box, and then this will be your 12 inch model right here. So they're, they float, which is another that was cool thing. The next question I was going to ask. Yeah, you. so you can, like, uh, if you're having a pool party and, you know, you're like my friends, they'll throw your sub in there to give you a hard time, and at least it'll float and not get wet. So oh, right. that's what are these retail for? These retail in our shop for $19.99. Um, you can go to their website and get them too. Um, but yeah, they come in three colors. We've got pink, uh, green, and then gray. So they're really cool. We just started carrying them, and uh, I think they're going to be a big hit in our shop for sure. Oh, so excellent. Very excited. excellent. Yeah. Well, let me ask you another cr a personal taste question. Yeah. Fresh water or salt water? What's it going to be? <laughs> what would you, what, if you had to make a choice, what do you think would give the, a newbie the most exciting time? Of Definitely salt water, because there's so many different species out there to catch. Whether you're catching little pinfish or on a bite, or catching 40, you know, 40 inch snook and your, oh, your reels yeah. are just peeling out line and drags peeling. Um, don't get me wrong. I'm, Big freshwater guy too. When the weather's pretty bad and windy, I'll try to find some freshwater spots where I can go get a couple of bass. Unfortunately, in our area, the bass are very small. <laughs> we don't get the big bass, but uh, you know, we, we try really hard for those. And uh, oh, yeah. but yeah, definitely salt water. Uh, that's that's why I got into this business. Is salt water is like my religion. You know, I go out there and it calms me down. and I can do my thing. So and. 
Last question I want to ask you, how long have you been fishing? You've got a lot of knowledge on this, so tell, tell the viewers a little bit about yourself. Yeah, so basically I, I grew up fishing pretty old school. Um, I'm still pretty old school about it. I, I don't go to circle hook. I still like to set the hook with a J hook. Uh, as kids, there's a spot uh, a little bit down south from us called Blinds Pass. And on the weekends, my dad used to, we used to go out there at like 9, 30, 10 o'clock. I'd go catch bait in the little cast that I had, and we only could take the biggest pinfish. Because this was his like legendary snook spot, you know, or whatever he wanted to call it. And uh, it only hit huge pinfish at this spot. It was funny because he had these old gold top pens with like the biggest ugly stick you've ever seen in your life. And that's what we used to fish as kids with. And uh, I think I caught that itch to catch snook. And I think that's why I predominantly only go for snook these days anymore. So I've always been a snook guy since a younger age. And I got pretty lucky um, when I graduated college. I uh, was lucky enough to teach a fishing camp at the local rec center. And, it's good to like understand and teach those little dudes. And Harrison was actually a camp counselor with me in that. Um, and it's it's so rewarding to see that the youth is still up and trying to oh, do yeah. it. Like, do you see a lot of women and girls coming in here? We too? do. We get a little. We get our fair share of women. Um, m most of the women we do get are, are going to be like a wife, you know, our husband and wife coming up here with their kids, and and they're awesome too because they want to learn just as much as we do. So that's what's so cool about the whole thing. And, like I said, you guys just come up here and pick our brains. We we talk to everybody up here like we're best friends with them. And that's the motto I keep with the guys is don't ever, you know, just because they're this person or this person, it doesn't matter. Everybody's treated fairly. Absolutely. Well, Jake, yes, it's, been, it's been awesome. Yes, sir. Well, this is the importance of befriending. Look, he's not ugly. He's a good looking guy. Ah, and he's believable. <laughs> I've been coming here for a long time, even before he became manager and owner of the place. So this is just the importance of tying in, locking horns with these guys, buy your bait here, and pick their brains. That's what they're here for. So that when you and your family or you and your girlfriend go out, you want to have a great time fishing, you're not out there winging it, because there's an expression, 90% of the people catch 10% of the fish, but 10% catch the 90% of the fish. Sure. Why don't you be part of the 10%? This is how you do it. So thanks for being with us. And Jake, yes, sir. Thank it's you. a pleasure. Yes, sir. Thank you.